Welcome back to Tao tonight. A very important subject, binge eating disorder and all eating disorders. And there's hope at the Center of Hope in the Sierras. And John Dolores is here, the executive director for the Center of Hope in the Sierras. Welcome to the show, John. Thank you for having me, Paul. Yeah, tell us what is a binge eating disorder? So binge eating disorder is somebody who consumes an excessive quantity of food in a very short period of time. And they're doing it for emotional reasons, not for any kind of hunger that they may have. So this satisfies some need in them to, to have this food and have it in large quantities and and is this common? Yes, and it's it's really it, it's it's actually very common and is the most common eating disorder out there. A lot of people are surprised to hear that they think that anorexia right. or bulimia is more common, but actually it's binge eating disorder. And people do this as a way to cope with their stress. Mm. So they get really emotional, really upset about whatever's going on in their lives, mm. and then they resort to food as that comfort. And so it becomes very maladaptive because of all the negative consequences of, of binge eating. And how often does someone binge eat? I mean, is this a, it just happens several times a day or does it happen once a week or? At, at its most severe, it will happen multiple times a day and it, potentially two, three, 5,000 calories a time. So what do you see them eating? Like a whole box of cereal or a box uh, of- An entire cake, uh, pies, large amounts of candy. And, and do they, they, do they do this frantically or is it just before you know it, the cake is gone. That That's the way it is for the person who is experiencing the binge eating disorder. They are really zoning out. So they start eating and then really just become unaware of the process. Mm -hmm. And before they know it, they're finished. And what are some of the signs of family members or friends to notice? I mean, is this something that they would tell their family members, listen, I just ate a whole cake, I don't know what happened? No, or... they become very embarrassed and ashamed about it and very isolative. So if you see your family member really uh, being less communicative, pulling away, mm -hmm. um, you know, being very uh, different or strange around food, uh, those are some signs where you can really start to reach out and say, what's going on, how can I help? And should they reach out to you for more information? What should a family or friend do if they suspect that they have someone that they love going through an eating disorder? You know, one of the things they can do is they can contact us right away. We provide an initial free consultation mm -hmm. uh, and they can contact us at the number on the screen Great. and uh, really let us know, you know, what kind of assistance and advice they need and we'll, we will provide that for them. And does it take someone like a family member or friend to sit them down and talk to them or is this something that you do intervention? Do you come into the home and say, listen, we've been called and if there's an issue we'd like to help you we will reach out and talk to the client if the family member thinks that's best but what we have seen to be the most effective is family members talking to their loved ones from the heart really getting that emotional piece of the conversation not trying to be, be logical and reasonable about it even though that that seems to be where a lot of people want to go but just tell your family member you love them you see they're struggling, you want them to have help. What are some of the health consequences of binge eating? So it can be various from, from hypertension um, to potential you know, diabetes type two. Mm -hmm. We see that a lot, people come in with type two diabetes at our center. And is this center uh, inpatient, outpatient, is it both, do you have we provide a, a variety of treatments. So in, from an inpatient residential level where there's 24-7 care, somebody who needs that level of support, to other outpatient programs that are of lesser time but st you know, still allow people to engage in work or school as necessary. And, and where is the center located? So we are in Reno, mm -hmm. and uh, you can go to our website to get some more information at www.centerforhopeofthesierras.com. Thank you very much. Appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you for having me, Paul. Thank Appreciate you. it. You're watching Tile tonight. We'll be back with more great stuff coming up right after this.